Hello and welcome to wrestling and welcome to our pay-per-view post-mortem for tables, <laughs> ladders, hold on, and chairs, I just dropped it, let's Kurt with the chair, we can only, relevant, we can only afford half a table as well, it's, yeah, relevant, it's relevant that, right, we're going to run through what happened at TLC and we're going to give our thoughts, opinions, reaction, review, the lot to the uh, to the pay per view or network special, depending on what you want to call it these days. Mm. So we started with the pre-show uh, with 205, and I thought that it was a shame that 205 got relegated to the pre-show. It makes sense in certain respects because it's not as watched as other things. Yeah, so maybe because it's on YouTube and Facebook, isn't it? So yeah, so but it gets new eyes on it, I guess. Yeah, and. For me, like the two hundred five, the cruiserweight title match has kind of stole the show. The last two pay per views, yeah, so I was expecting it to be in the main show again. Um, but it was a good match again. I really enjoyed it. Um, Murphy's class, mm, he's really good. Um, Cedric's really good as well. Uh, but Murphy's got because he's like heel. He's got like that little bit of something about him. Yeah, that knee strike that he does is amazing. Um, but yeah, so they're really. For me, the two or five lads, you know, the top tier ones, um, Art and Steph Rally, uh, Cedric and um, Buddy Murphy, they're really killing it at the minute. Um, there was just loads of spots, loads and loads of spots. Michinoku Driver, um, I don't know what that movie is that Cedric does, uh, he did it to Ring Edge really, like, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know what it's called, it's kind of like, a bit like an attitude adjustment, but slightly different. He did that to the Ring Edge. And the lumbar check, which I don't know how that doesn't kill a man. Um, but Buddy Murphy ended up just switching it round with his with his big knee. And then he did Murphy's Law and he returned. So it was a good match, great opening. And then, strangely enough, we got Elias and Lashley, which yeah, I was we, shocked at. I didn't think they'd be on the, the pre-show. No. I, also, I didn't realise that all they had to do was grab the guitar to yeah. win, which was, seemed a bit rubbish. And I think we might have said this in our predictions, yeah. that we didn't quite know what the yeah. stip was. So we thought that it was kind of like an honour pull match, as, as they used to yeah, be called. Do you, do you remember when um, Triple H had that sledgehammer dangling from the thing? I don't think I saw that. He, he fought, um, oh, I've forgotten his name, Big Lad, his mate. There's a few of them. Oh. Batista? Diesel. What's Diesel's mm, uh, Kevin Nash. Yeah, Kevin Nash. He fought him in um, a sledgehammer dangling from the ceiling. Right. But that was, he got the sledgehammer and then they could use they it as a weapon. just could use it, yeah. And that's what we thought. But I thought that was what they'd announced it yeah. as on Raw. They, what, I'm sure they said that's that. That's what we thought. And then it just changed to a standard ladder match. Yeah, when you get a guitar, which was weird. Yeah, but. it was weird. Um, so, obviously, Leo Rush was in there sort of running distraction and stuff. Um, there was a bit where the uh, Elias was whipped into the uh, ladder and then it like fell on him and like clattered him on the back of the head. <laughs> I thought that was a bit brutal. Um, quite some rough spots actually with the ladder. Uh, Elias got dumped on it. Belly to belly suplex into it. Looked awful. And then Elias power bombs Lashley onto the ladder. Take some punishment, don't they, in these mm, matches? And he got up and he got the guitar and the bell rang. So it was, a, like we say, a standard ladder match, really. Weird. Yeah, they beat him down after <clears> the match. So yeah, this, yeah. Uh, I presume this feud. Did they crack the guitar, guitar on over him? him? Again. I think I might have missed that. So I think there's, I there's another guitar work. gone that would be mentioned. I know, yeah. Racking up the costs to uh, Fender. Well, it is Fender, isn't it? Yeah. Right, then on to the main show, mm. and we start with the finals of the Mixed Match Challenge, which is interesting, um, because it was on Facebook, so it's the first time ever that part of a pay-per-view has been on Facebook, mm, yeah, which, which is interesting. Um, we were saying that, why wasn't it on the pre-show, because that's on Facebook Watch anyway, but it's also on YouTube, and I think maybe that's something to do with it, maybe Facebook said like they didn't want their show being... On cast on YouTube yeah, or something maybe but yeah um, I love the entrance for Fabulous Truth I thought it was excellent yeah the, like, the entrances are good they did the full 
the full song. Yeah. And apparently, so I don't know this, but apparently, um, our truth used to get things wrong in his song a lot or something. Did like, he? yeah, apparently, yeah. I, I, just, I, you know, I, I only know him from hmm. recent times. So, um, but no, it was good. They did a little rap, and then Carmela was doing it. Yeah, she was loving it. She's loving it. Like she properly is loving it. You can tell. He looks really good as well. To say he's fifty, he's like nearly fifty, isn't yeah. it? He's coming on fifty, I think. Yeah. Some of the moves that he was doing. I know. Crazy. Uh, there's a seven second dance break. Yeah, and the Sing Brothers start doing the dance as well. It must have been more than seven seconds yeah. because they came and joined in. Yeah. Yeah, but they both got thrown out of the ring. Yeah. Both um, things. Foxy does a wonderful Northern Lights suplex, which just looks amazing. Yeah. Um, she puts that captain's hat on and then yeah. she starts showing the truth. Truth nicks it off her. Yeah, and then he steals it. So she kicks him. Should have yeah. been a DQ. They need to get that sorted for next season. Oh, yeah, just the sort They say the men versus the men, and the, yeah. it should be a DQ then if, if you know. Um, Carmella puts Fox in the code of silence and she taps people saying oh we didn't see a tap she tapped I also didn't see a tap she tapped she oh. did she tapped uh, so they and this is where I went wrong instantly on the predictions so there's time to announce already yeah. that Adam has retained the pay-per-view predictions trophy for the fourth pay-per-view in a row I believe Yeah. because yeah. at this point I'd already got it one wrong and we could only draw and Champions advantage means yeah. you get to keep so, it off a draw. I uh, hold the most prestigious title in all the predictions world. I don't know if I'm ever going to get it off him. I've held it for the longest reign in ever. You're the longest reign in Welcome to Wrestling history. History. We might have to get like a guest on one week to try and like take <laughs> it off my because... So uh, the guys get to pick a vacation lo- uh, location. Mm. And, and they're also number 30. This was world, where, right? yeah, this was where, when, like, the number 30 thing we knew, but when they started going on about the vacation thing, I was like, shit, it's, I've picked wrong, because I picked Jinder and fuck, I don't know yeah. why, I don't know why I picked them. I picked them off maybe the 30 spot. Yeah. But as soon as the vacation thing, oh yeah, they get a picture, I was like, well, they're clearly going to film that as a network special, mm-hmm. aren't they? Yeah. It's obvious. So, yeah, it's a, it's announced that R-Truth's already picked yeah, their uh, their location. Carmelo was hoping to go to Barcelona or somewhere exotic. Truth has picked WWE HQ in Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> Stanford, Connecticut. When I can speak, so I'm assuming that will be a network presume, special. So, yeah. yeah, it was funny. It, the match it, wasn't it was great, a, but it was entertaining. No, it was entertaining, uh, an, an entertaining opening match, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was all right. Yeah, fair enough. And like I say, our truth doing the splits. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I know, man can that, when he, that when he jumps up in the air and does yeah. it. Oh my God. Move. Next was the uh, the tag team match, which we thought could potentially be match of the yeah, night. Yeah, I, I think I confused myself as to what this one was going to be as well. I thought it was a TLC, but it was just a normal... No, I knew it wasn't a TLC, but I thought when it's a triple threat tag, it would be yeah, three, three guys in the but ring. It's not, is it? It's no. One team's like... Out, out of it, which is weird. But has it always been that way? No, I don't think so. But I, I didn't really. Why couldn't they do it with mm. three? And... I don't know, but I don't think this really like massively got going up to what it could have yeah, been. Yeah, it was, it was good, and like the teams, the teams have chemistry and everything. Yeah. But I, yeah, like it wasn't the best for the of no, these guys. Not at all. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, I thought it would be three guys in the ring at once, and they could tag. You know their partners in, but no, the Usos had to like try and tag themselves in, which is like really unfair. Yeah, I, it didn't make sense no, to me they, that everyone should be in. Um, Cesaro did a uh, like you know the vertical mm. suplex thing. Held Kofi up in the air, uh, and Jimmy uh, hits a crossbody off the turnbuckle, which I thought looked really good. And then there's a super kick party, pop up Samoan uh, drop, which looks awesome. Uh, Kofi gets locked into the sharpshooter Woods saves it with a swinging DDT this bit was cool uh, through the uh, through the ropes oh, he did the swinging yeah. DDT trouble in paradise and then the big elbow but uh, the other guys save the match Sheamus and, uh, and the Usos uh, Woods hits a step up Enziguri but as he goes to enter the ring he is knocked clean out by a broad kick and the bar retain their championship which is mm-hmm. I think it's one that we weren't really expecting. Oh, I, though I did say that I could see them keeping yeah. it on them. 
But I, I was expecting a change here. Yeah, we both, both picked. Both of us yeah. picked different, didn't we? So yeah. we, uh, we got a, a few wrong this prediction. Yeah, actually, yeah, we did. Uh, but, you know, fair enough. And Seamus and Cesaro, I think, f- for me, I've only been watching like the past two years. And so most of the, mm. the, the run that I've watched, they've been a tag team. Um, and I think they've been good. I, I, I don't know, like for you, you you've probably seen them before, yeah. but... Um, yeah, no, they've been good. You didn't, you didn't sort of think like, oh, will this work? Two singles mm. guys, and then it, like they've been a really it's done good. Really well, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but now, so fair enough. They retain and go on with it. Mm. And next was the match. We're sort of intrigued. What will happen? I got really confused with this one as well. Yeah, with, Braun versus Corbin. Yeah, with Heath Slater as special guest referee, which we knew would happen. And it started with Corbin and uh, Heath Slater in the ring. Yep, and. Slater starts counting, doesn't he? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gets to seven. Braun! And then Braun comes out. It takes ages to get to the S- ring. So, like, I thought, well, wh- why is Slater not counting still? Mm. He got to seven. Braun took, like, a minute still to yeah, get in the ring. Ages I was like, well, he could have counted him out. But, and I, I even tweeted this out on our mm. uh, Twitter, which I, I've gonna, I'm going to put the handle in the corner now so people can yeah. find us on Twitter. Yeah. Um, Oh, the WWE don't ever think things through, blah blah blah. Yeah. And then, like next minute, Strowman was like, "Yeah, it's TLC match. It's no DQ or count outs." Yeah, yeah. So why was he counting him out? Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, "Oh, so they do think things through every yeah. once in a while." Of course, it was no yeah, count out. True. I don't, why didn't we think of that? Yeah. So he comes out anywhere, and he's in a. That's literally why it got made a TLC match, yeah. by the way. <laughs> And he's in like a, his arm bandaged yeah, he's up and that. Slinged up, yeah. So he um, he says on the mic that what well, Corbin's going like oh, you can't wrestle yeah. like that and that. But then he says, Oh because it's a no DQ match, all the people that you've done wrong and that could help yeah. me out. And then as from nowhere, everybody starts appearing. Yeah, there's Apollo turns up with a chair and then there's yeah. uh, Bobby Roode. Team Glorious. And Team Glorious, yeah. Um, and then there's someone else. else there? was obviously Finn Balor. Finn Balor, yeah. Finn Balor. And then um, the best bit for me, Slater, takes yeah. his ref's jersey off. Yeah. Clocks Corbin. Yeah, they all start beating him up. He rolls out of the ring and as he's going up the ramp, Kurt Angle's music hits his back. Da, 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 and he's got one of these, hasn't he? Yeah. Where he goes and gets one. Starts, oh, no. starts clubbing him with chair and gets him back in the ring. Everybody sort of hits the finisher on him. And yeah, there's a round of finishes. Braun St- Strowman just sort of steps on him. One, two, three. He wins. I thought that they were going to help him up onto Strowman's other shoulder and he was going to try and do it. thingy. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I thought it was good. I was like, fair play, WWE. Yeah. It was I enjoyed good. it. I enjoyed that. Yeah, bit. it was good. To say back, nice little bit of payoff from a story. Yeah, to say that Braun couldn't wrestle, it was. Um, it was alright, wasn't it? They, I thought they handled it really well. Yeah. The, the situation. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I had a smile good. on my face. Um, and although, like, the whole Corbin thing's now become a bit of a conduit for like how people feel about Vince mm. and the way he runs Raw and stuff, which is addressed on Monday Night Raw, which we'll get to in our uh, Raw mm. replay video. But yeah, I thought they did well here. Yeah, the next match... Did you skip this match or did you watch it? I watched this match. Wow, I thought you'd skip it. And Do you know what? I didn't think it was too It was better than than I thought it was going to be. Like, to say I wasn't bothered about it, Yeah. but I watched it and I thought, like, the whole, it started off with Natalia sort of taking out, she took out Liv Morgan first. That looked really good when she sort of... She took a nasty bump, didn't she? Well, Liv Morgan pushed... um, Ruby right out the way and sort of took the hit and she flew through yeah, that table. She did, it looked yeah. quite nasty. Then she took um, the one that I don't really like. Sarah Logan. Yeah. She took her out, put her through a table, took them sort of both out. Mm-hmm. And then this was a bit stupid, I thought, but she pulled out a table with Ruby Riot on it. Yeah. Print it out of yeah. Ruby yeah, to match up with the Anvil one. Yeah. and There's, I, there's a bit where Ruby shoved Natty's face like right into her dad's <laughs> face as well on, on that table. But yeah. she, she was. She's like, your dad would be yeah. ashamed of you. She kept saying stuff like that. Like, it's good heel work. Did you but... see the bit where um, Ruby Riot was like, sort of, um, lent against the. I don't know what it is, like, board 
between the crowd. The barrier, the yeah. crowd barrier. And she like grabs her by the face and then it's like, don't mention my family, bitch, and then just yeah, smashes yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but then Natalia gets this jacket, which I presume is that's Jim Jim's, Jim's jacket, jacket. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can't remember how she did it, but she eventually put her through the. I know there were. Did she power bomb her through the table? Yes, because um, they were in the corner, weren't they? They were on the turnbuckle. Yeah, so there was a bit earlier on where Natty had the sharpshooter in on Ruby as well, and it like looked really good. And then uh, Ruby managed to—I thought this was quite clever. She like because she was in the corner, she tipped the anvil yeah. table onto Natty's head. Mm. <laughs> she took a little boop, but, went down. That was good. Um, yeah, she managed to put. Ruby. Yeah, they were like they were like in the turnbuckle, weren't yeah. they? They were doing a bit of like. Sort of like oh Ruby's gonna do this, but yeah, 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 and then she managed to do the power bomb. Yeah, and through, putting so. her through it, and then after the match, she sort of put some glasses on her head. Yeah, she she did the whole like and picked up Jim the Anvil half of Ruby stuff. Riot table, and that was it. We both thought she'd win. It was the right thing. Yeah. it's a big it, face. The match wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna same. be. Same, yeah, same. I'm glad you said that because yeah. I, I thought, yeah, oh, do you know what? It was all right. Yeah, nothing. Amazing, but Be- better, better than, than I thought yeah, it would yeah, be same. to say we weren't interested yeah, in it yeah. really. And next was, well, sort of five minutes of Drew just beating the crap out of Finn Balor. Ragdolled him all over absolutely. the ring, didn't he? Yeah, it was absolutely destroying See, him. See, this wasn't match, it? right? Although I like, you know, Finn, I like Finn, but for me, like everyone's like, oh, Finn, Finn, Finn. Like, I'm not massively into him like what everyone else is like yeah he's good and and, and everything but um, I think Drew's really good but this one had a real feel of like this is a Monday Night Raw match yeah <laughs> do um, you know what I mean yeah so he's beating up for ages and that he gets stuck in between the uh, ring apron doesn't he Drew yeah he sort of turn around yeah. for a bit Um but then as he sort of gets gives out gives him a Glasgow kiss yeah he gives him a Glasgow kick oh. throws him back into the ring ref goes to see if he's alright yeah out of nowhere, Dolph Ziggler, super yeah. kick. Boom. Um, and then Ziggler picks up a chair. Yep. But he doesn't get to use it, does he? No, he gets booted. He gets booted. But then Finn... No, Drew's got the chair, brings it into the ring, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And then Finn runs up and kicks the chair into him. And I thought, surely that's a DQ. Was, was it sort of using the weapon? I was going to say, was it not? Was it a standard... St- it's just a standard match, yeah. yeah. But I thought when... That was a great drop kick, that, that shot yeah, drop good. kick. But I thought, Oof. like, surely when he's kicked the chair into him, that's using the weapon, yeah. sort of. It's where they play fast and loose, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, coup de and gras. then coup de gras, and Finn wins. I was surprised. Yeah, but with the Drew interfering, it, uh, with Dolph interfering, uh, costing Drew, you can sort of, like, yeah. accept that. Because yeah, yeah. And, but saying that, Finn doesn't get many wins on pay per view, does he? No. So it was quite a nice sort of but change. There's one bit which um, got me backstage, like after this match ends. Mm-hmm. Well, like, it I must have missed this as well, did I? It, it wasn't after this match. I think it was after another match. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about that now or later. No, no, no. Go on, go on. But the bit that got me was after the match. Finn's doing an interview with uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. And Dolph comes in. And Finn's like, oh, well, I didn't need your help. And yeah, that. exactly. But they have a sort of disagreement and then Dolph sort of... Um, Throws him into a load of equipment, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, which was weird. Because I thought Dolph's gone face now, but he's sort of like... No. He's sort of in between, isn't he? Tweener. Yeah. Um, yeah, they might they might set up kind of a three... A triple threat. I want Drew to meet main event. Yeah, I know. I, want, I just want Braun to win that universal title. Yeah. I want Drew, uh, Drew to go sure, up against right. him. Yeah. And they can have back and forth, and Drew can win the title, and Braun can win it back off him, and they can do that for a year. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Ray versus Randy Orton in a chairs match. And to say that chairs matches have never really been great when they've done them, this one was all right mm. for me. I thought it was quite good. Yeah. I mean. Did you not. Were you not that into it? It was all right. I didn't really take much from the match. There wasn't any like. I just thought like for a stipulation that's had bad matches in the past. Yeah. I thought that the two that were in there did really well with it. Yeah. Um, Ray starts the match and he goes mental with chairs. Mm. He's just like leathering, leathering, 
um, Randy with chairs. And then he does that little slide splash thing with the chair. Yeah. Which is cool. The bit was good where he jumped off the turnbuckle and Randy just sort of launched the chair. Yeah, and throws it at him. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, he, did, he tried to do a sent on onto like yeah. a, a group of chairs and, and missed as well. So there was like quite a lot of like really brutal spots tonight. Yeah. Which is obviously like you would hope for with it being TLC. And I think everyone sort of lived up to it yeah. on the night. Um, Randy tries to put Ray through the commentary table, but it doesn't budge. But I don't know if I've got that right, or I don't know if I looked away mm. briefly and he, tr- and he just slammed him into it. Um, they get their signature moves in, that power slam's lovely that Randy yeah, does, good. but he nearly does it into a bunch of chairs as well, <laughs> accidentally. Uh, Ray does his little jump off turnbuckle and that's what you said Randy just throws yeah, a chair absolutely. you've got yeah. you've got to think that those spots because they've done things like that a few times yeah. in the last year in a bit mm. that's so hard to predict because anything could go wrong with doing that because mm. you, you can't yeah. throw a chair no. and know that it's going to go yeah. the way you want it, it to it looks real good there they've done it a few times because yeah. they did it with the commentary t- uh, chairs didn't they uh, yeah. uh, before uh, Ray hits his 6-1-9, he goes up top, Randy stops him, he swings Ray down into the chair that he set up earlier, uh, and then he sort, you know, like, sort of yeah. like swings him off, I don't, I don't know, he like flips him off the, the turnbuckle. It's a 6 one nine, doesn't he, yeah. but when he goes to the, that top bit, I thought, I always thought the 6 one nine was always the full thing, but it's not, it's no, just a swinging, no. like... Yeah, he does, he does another bit after... And then... And then Randy set up a row of chairs... Yeah. And he goes to do the RKO, but he does it from like a like a starting position instead yeah. of doing it like the quick snap. Yeah. Which he knew, and I instantly was like, "It's not going to work." Yeah, yeah. he's going he's gonna to get reversed. Yeah. So he's like trying to do like a running one. Yeah. Um, but Ray sort of dumps him onto the chairs, and Randy's like sat like all groggy on the chair like yeah. this. And then Ray sort of gets up on his shoulders, and he like rolls him down off the chair yeah. into a pin and wins. It was yeah. really interesting. Uh, pin and. Real wins. I thought it was quite a creative match. Yeah, I, I, it was I, all right for I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed really it. Good. Uh, right, we can skip over that because that's what we mentioned earlier about uh, the backstage. Yeah. So I'll put Naya in wrong way. Look, Naya. <laughs> Naya versus Rousey. <laughs> Naya versus Ronda Rousey. Naya shoves Ronda across the ring. Commentary table are really putting over the face breaker gimmick, yeah. especially guess who? Guess who? When I say that, when Magal. Yes. Cool. Hashtag facebreaker. Oh, it's another yeah, little catchphrase that he likes, isn't it? And I tell you, the first thing I noticed from this match was when Rousey got her in the armband. I was like, Jesus, that's going to be quick. And she actually gets out of it. Yeah, yeah. The first person to get out of it? Yeah. Possibly. Uh, yeah, I think she might be. Because everyone uh, taps. Steph kind of did, but but it was like, she did, but didn't. In yeah, a way, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronda just got it back in really yeah. quick. Ronda's like a monkey on Naya's back during this match. She's like, oh, like on her back, like locking in sleeper holes and then like rolling yeah. around her and doing yeah. different holds. Um, Naya slams her into the barrier. Ronda hits a crossbody, mm. which is a, a new thing. I've never seen her do that before. And she actually executed it very well to the outside of the ring as well. Uh, Ronda hits that like step up knee that she started doing, which looks awesome. She does a step up like elbow strike yeah. as well. Which looked awesome, Ronda Rousey, man. She's getting good. Oh, she's so good. She's pretty good. I I really like. This. She hasn't been doing it. Long I actually long. really like this match as well. And like normally yeah. nine matches, you're a bit like eh. yeah, nah, yeah. Tamina did nothing though. What's Tamina? Not a fan of Tamina. Why she? Anyway, um, another crossbody. Nia catches her, does a Samoan drop, and I was like, oh my god. And, uh, uh, and then she, uh, I've put gods when I should have put goes. I think. <laughs> Sorry, I like pointing out my mistakes in my notes. She goes to do the uh, super Samoan drop, but Ronda wriggles free and she hits a power bomb. Still no three count. Tamina runs interference. Naya goes to do the face ba- breaker thing. Yeah, like she, she that's like a new like yeah. she was like uh, a yeah. bit like Big Show. Yeah, uh, she kind of gets her, but she doesn't. Yeah, and then. Uh, mm-hmm. Flips it into a, an armbar. Yeah, like she again, she gets but, like up on her shoulders and then she like drags her down I into the armbar. This arm was bar. the best, well, one of the best bits of the matches where she flipped her and before she locked in the armbar, because Nia, oh, yeah, yeah, Nia yeah. was on the floor with her arm up like that, she uh, she got her arm and like kissed yeah, the yeah. face breaker and then, and she then looked, locked it in. She looked at Tamina and went, This is for you or something. Yeah, like and that. then locked the armbar in and yeah. Nia oh, tapped. But that Ro- bit where she kissed the, the face Ronda breaker, Rousey just, was, she's got it. 
Yeah. I know we keep singing her praises, but, but my God, really she's got good. it. Like, she's just... She's picked it up so well. She's brilliant. Yeah. She's even getting that in-ring shit now, like, that storytelling shit. Yeah, yeah. She's getting but that down. Just the bit where she kissed the, yeah, uh, like, the fists, oh. and then it was so good. Really, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, people might not have enjoyed it, yeah, might, maybe it was, not, but I, I really enjoyed it. It was good, it. and on to... We knew Ronda was going to win, Yeah. and the way that they did the match, it I thought was good. It was good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on to what I would possibly say might have been match of the night, but we'll we'll see. I personally preferred the main event, but right, okay. I could. This was the, probably the second best match of yeah. the night for me. But so it might not have been quite like what you would normally expect from Daniel Bryan and and, and uh, AJ Styles, but I think because Daniel Bryan's sort of having to change his move set to suit the the heel thing. Yeah. Um, so straight away at the, at the top of the match, Daniel Bryan does the thing that Kevin Owens used to do, rolling out of the ring, yeah, being like a bit of a dick, uh, and then, then when he starts going like Daniel Bryan's just ruthless, he's just doing like knees to the back of uh, to AJ like proper hard hitting strikes. Has that kind of like that Japanese feel to it? Mm. Uh, which, Quite strong style. Yeah, like strong like. style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden Styles gets that big clothesline in and sort of gets a bit of separation. I love it when they do this and the the, the person selling it does a big spin. Yeah. Um, Kevin Owens, again, mentioned him again. He does that really well as well. Um, One bit I noticed from your note was um, Daniel Bryan, after you said this the other day, you know, with the no kicks, yeah. as soon as he started doing them, because you said, oh, he misses the last he one. He got it, didn't he? He hits all of them this yeah, time, doesn't yeah, he? I yeah, I that, yeah. I thought they were going to like run with that. I, but no. I didn't really notice it, but until you I'd said, said last yeah. time, I was like, oh, really I, miss it. But he didn't, he just hit them all, doesn't he? That's why I put it, yeah. have I put it down here? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I um, I put it in, because I thought, oh, he actually got that last yeah. one. Um, so, yeah, all sorts going on in the match, mm. like knee strikes, swinging suplexes, reverse DDTs. Um... Yeah, it, 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 I thought it was a really good match. This there was a dragon screw, um, and then AJ goes a little bit destructive and and repairs Daniel Bryan for the knee destruction from SmackDown Live, uh, just wrapping his knee around mm. the uh, turnbuckles. Hits a chop block, so a lot of sort of storytelling there, playing from from what's been going on on TV. Um, then he locks in a half crab as AJ on Daniel Bryan, and I was like, ooh. Well, this doesn't look good for Daniel Bryan, but he manages to reverse it into what is now known as the LaBelle lock. Yeah. Formerly it the Yes lock. It used to be lock. called that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, apparently so, yeah. Um, then they do like a pin combination reverses. Yeah. Looked awesome, really good stuff. There's a big kick from Daniel Bryan yeah, and AJ is like yeah. rocking and then he hits the Pele kick. He always does that when Sorry, he's Sorry, I say it the American way because <laughs> yeah. I'm used to him saying it on commentary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was just good. It was. Uh, I just thought it was a really good match. The four fifty that AJ did, I yeah. thought he under rotated a bit on it. I know, it looked alright. Uh, but there was because it was like Corey that was going like, oh, perfect hitting that. I was like, oh, I don't know. It looked like he under rotated to me. But because Daniel Bryan kind of like, I don't know, he was quite far. Yeah. Um. Then there's a calf crusher. And he, uh, Daniel Bryan manages to like roll yeah. away and escape. AJ goes and hits the um, forearm, phenomenal forearm, doesn't he? From the timekeeper's area. Which it yeah. always looks good because it's like a Superman punch, pretty much. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking this. Just a Superman punch with. Well, that thing Ronda did earlier in, in, in her match, yeah, that step up was yeah. basically a Superman yeah, punch. Yeah, much. But that, that looked brutal. Yeah. It looked brutal when Ronda did it. Um, yeah, goes for the uh, forearm again in the ring once he's rolled Daniel Bryan in, but he ducks, nearly hits the referee. Uh, Daniel Bryan goes for his running knee, misses, inside cradle from um, AJ. One, two, Daniel Bryan manages to roll the inside cradle back into his own inside cradle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, That's Daniel the Bryan one. retains the title. I didn't like the end sequence it was the only part of the match yeah. I didn't like I thought it should have been like a clean finish I thought it was a little bit of a lacklustre um, and I, I presume you think it should have been a clean finish yeah because I presume now the feud's continuing because they don't normally end feuds on like a sort of why roll would you, up like this why would you have had it a clean finish when it was Daniel Bryan that won well just like a 
a significant like a pin or a tap out just to yeah because I thought this is the end of the feud. So I was I was expecting like more shenanigans. Yeah, they kind of did the like the, but, the or like, you know like they did the ref spot maybe yeah maybe they could have gone. Or with if that, he was I gonna win like instead of a roll up like it was like, all right yeah but yeah, it's sort of like for the, after what I thought was a really good slow burn into a really great match yeah it was just a bit of a lackluster ending yeah. Uh, but I've seen other people say that they didn't, they didn't, in, they didn't really enjoy the match. So it's all subjective, isn't it? Yeah, true. Um, then backstage, yeah. And Ronda says that Payback's a bitch, and that, yeah. that is it. I'm the baddest bitch yeah. on the planet. Good, I enjoyed it. Mm. In reference to Charlotte, of course. Okay, possibly the worst match of the night for me. Yeah, crowd. Surprisingly, yeah. Dean versus Seth. I do like that air raid theme yeah. that's added into Dean's theme tune. Mm. It really adds to it. Um, it wasn't great. It was just Renee and Corey bickering about Dean yeah. for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, which was like... yeah. I didn't take anything away from this other than uh, at one point sort of... The only bits I liked about it was Dean mm. going crazy. Yeah, but then Seth went sort of lost his temper went yeah but crazy. I mean when I mean that I mean like Dean was like talking to himself yeah. and stuff like that like I'd rather get that Dean than the one where he was wearing gas masks oh and, wacky yeah and, yeah weird they need to like really understand what they need to do with, with Dean the, yeah because he sort of flickers a bit doesn't yeah. he yeah um, so Dean dominates the early goings in the match um, puts Seth in a cloverleaf for ages like it was a really long time he was locked yeah. in Seth manages to reach the ropes there's a lot of like, oh, Seth surgically repaired knee because there always is. We said, uh, pardon yeah, me. Uh, so it's like me saying, oh, yeah, broke my finger like 20 years ago. Yeah, oh, like they roll it out too often, I think, with Seth now. Like, it must still hurt now. I've got an itch here. So <laughs> uh, they both go, oh, sorry, they're both on the top turnbuckle. Seth goes for the sunset flip, but his knee gives out again like it did before. Uh, he then goes for a buckle bomb. Doesn't get all of it because his legs can't carry him. Double cross body, which they seem to like doing a lot of recently with people. I think did Seth and Ziggler even do that? Like not two months ago. Something like that. I think. There's like loads of boring yeah. chants from the crowd. The crowd are not into this at all. Um, Dean mocks Seth, does his taunt, and he tries to hit him with a stomp. Seth evades, rip cord knee, goes for the splash, but Dean gets his knee up. Uh, into the cover. That was a close call. Yeah, the, the best bit was when um, Dean went for the shield fist and Seth was sort of yeah, fuming. Yeah, I don't know. I was a bit like... Ee. And then... Becky, there was Becky chants. Yeah. People started chatting for Becky. We got super plex into a falcon arrow. Two count. Seth clutching his knee after this. And then, like you say, mm. uh, Dean goes, Oh, come on, man. We'll be friends again. Mm. And Seth's like, nah. And then he hits the Dirty Deeds out of nowhere, wins the IC title. No one really cared. I think it's the correct result. He should have had a stip. Yeah, shouldn't should have, it? Definitely should have. Should have had a stip. Could have been a ladder match. Because we didn't get a ladder match. Yeah. The Elias one. We got a ladder match, but <laughs> that was a weird pre-show one that no one really cared about. But He should have had a stip. Also, I thought it was a bit weird putting like this before the main event. I personally would now move on from this feud all yeah again. they've sort of ruined it it could have been Just good get Seth up the card yeah. move him up the card could have been good but I don't think it was that good triple um, threat main event first ever night for me first ever women's TLC yeah yeah oh. match of night for you yeah good really good it was good Becky, Becky's she, yeah, yeah I was going to say she Go got on. cheered like mad didn't oh she? my god Everyone the crowd were really good I thought oh did we miss a bit out? Go on. We did, didn't we? Oh, go on. Because I, I missed it. Earlier That's why. in the night. That's why. Go on. Um, <laughs> while we're on the subject of Becky, she saw Naya backstage. I missed it. Twice, not in my notes. Yeah. She must yeah. skipped through it. Naya was sort of like, uh, holding her arm and that. And then Becky appeared. Bang. Took her out. Knocked her out. I need to go back and watch and that. And the crowd went absolutely wild. They were absolutely buzzing. I didn't watch all of the uh, event live, so mm. I watched the rest of it like the day after, and I tend to skip past yeah. the adverts and but stuff. It was, and I must have missed. It was this. quite a good bit, like a bit of payoff, and yeah, it was good because technically they both are there, aren't they? Raw and SmackDown yeah. brands, and 
Yeah, it played well into Becky's so, sort of badass. Um, another wrestling YouTube channel, uh, someone from their channel tweeted, Mix Match Challenge up first. Good job that TLC is the only night of the year where Raw and SmackDown go up against each other, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was really funny. Uh, yeah, so this match, like we said, Becky, she just got, like, it was so loud for her. Yeah. Um, Charlotte set a table up in the corner, it goes to smear Asuka, uh, but she reverses it into the code breaker. But I don't know what you actually call the code breaker that when it's not a code breaker. That's know. obviously like Jericho's yeah, name for it. Yeah, it is like. Uh, but uh, like Asuka does it. Yeah. And she's, she's done that a few times recently, hasn't she? Uh, Asuka flips Becky off the turnbuckle into a ladder. It looked like it hurt. Oof. There's a yeah. lot of points in this match that looked like they there hurt. Was, that's what I'm saying. Like, throughout the night, I think that all these wrestlers, they really got the TLC yeah. pay per view over. There was a bit where it's not like extreme rules where oh there's two extreme rules matches oh, yeah. and yeah. do you know what I mean like the bit which was good for me was you know Asuka does that bit where she runs and like knocks them off the apron with her arms yeah yeah, yeah. she went to do that and then she like turned around and went to like throw herself back I think Charlotte got the chair and yeah. just smashed her in back she she knocked them both off mm. and then she was doing that thing where she hangs in it and she like does a tall yeah. thing and, and I think it was Charlotte wasn't it yeah, yeah she just smashed her in back yeah <laughs> yeah it was Look, good it looked like it hurt yeah um, uh, what, what else have we got here I don't know if you've just Be- done that bit there that, that's at the top yeah then Becky goes mad with the chair yeah 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 um, it's just it was so Charlotte, much I can't remember in what order yeah, as well I mean, but there's so much to it. Charlotte, it's a moonsault yeah, to both of them. Yeah, moonsault looked good. Uh, Charlotte's moonsaults are so good. Then Becky loads both opponents up on the commentary table. She gets a big t- uh, ladder. Yeah. She does a leg drop, which, like... Must out, hurt. Yeah, like, yeah. that's crazy, doing a leg Must drop through a tip. Yeah. Puts them um, both Asuka manages to, manages to roll off before she hits it. But Charlotte took the... I think it actually legit hurt Charlotte because she swore. Because mm-hmm. uh, when I was watching it back, they dipped Lit, the audio yeah. out, yeah. <laughs> it legitimately must have hurt Charlotte for her to do I'm that. not surprised. Yeah. Um, and then Becky and Asuka are uh, slugging it out uh, within reach of the title. But Becky... Uh, sorry, Charlotte rejoins with a kendo stick. <laughs> this <laughs> is the Charlotte I like when she just goes absolutely berserk all three and... women like for me in this match got their characters back to where like to what yeah. what, what yeah, they yeah, should yeah. be um cause like Asuka's been pretty lame since Mania really uh, there's a Bexploder into the table against a barrier uh which looks brutal and then Asuka's hammering Becky with the kendo stick which I like um she's good with that kendo stick yeah then she's busy celebrating yeah and uh, out of nowhere, big spear, big spear yeah. through the timekeeper's barrier, yeah, or barricade, uh, which was awesome. Actually, now like talking back through it, I'm like, yeah, probably was match of the night. Becky's uh, living up to her Austin metamorphosis mm. so much because she uh, she hits the Thes press, yeah, which Austin used to do. Um, I thought that was a nice little. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's an ode to to Stone Cold. Um, Charlotte sets Becky up on a table outside. She bitch slaps her. Says the ma- a man always bows down to the queen, and then she somersaults through, uh, through the table or or a, a swanton you could call it, but just like a normal sort of like front flip really. Yeah. Um, and then Charlotte yeah. and Asuka are on the ladder, aren't they? Yeah, duking it out. Yeah. Right near the title. But then Asuka gets off. And Becky sets one up next to him, doesn't yeah. she? Asuka and, slides down. Yeah, and it's Becky and Charlotte just sort of smashing each other. And then out of nowhere, mm. I was going to say Randy Orton, but it was, <laughs> <laughs> he did not come down. Um, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, Ronda. Comes bit, down. Bit of payback. And this alludes to earlier when she said payback's a bitch. And she runs into the... People were mad with it, and I, but I was yeah. like, but it's Makes a sense. through line. It's and good. she pushes the ladder with them both. And the both fall down, and Asuka climbs up and grabs the title. Ronda got booed as well during this. Yeah, but that's because Becky's so over. Yeah. But for but me, Asuka got a massive ovation yeah. when she won. Yeah, um, but for me, I really liked the finish because I thought it plays well into 
Ronda versus Charlotte at Mania because that's what yeah. But here's the thing: be or is, is it, it? going to be? Is it going to be Ronda versus Charlotte versus Becky? And a, some people were like, "We want it to be Ronda versus Becky." Mm. I would be more than thrilled for that triple, triple threat. threat. Yeah, Cause definitely. Hill Charlotte's amazing. Yeah, Becky on her current run is yeah. amazing. Ronda's amazing. Yeah, but I thought it played in really well. It played in really well that. Becky hit Nia backstage to sort of keep the past sort of relevant. Yeah. Instead of just sweeping it under the rug, forgetting it, it happened. It was good storytelling. Yeah. It, and it was just good that obviously Charlotte beat the crap out of Ronda last time. Becky beat the crap out of Ronda on the Raw before. Yeah. It's good. Thingy. It was good. It's so, good. So. so what, why not screw them both up? Yeah, but I yeah. thought it was really good, it's really good, good finish. And it, I wouldn't and say it's a heel turn. From, no, it's not just at all. it's just a payback thing, yeah, isn't it? Payback. Which again, Keep her. she said earlier on in the night. Yeah, paybacks. So it's it's all it all ties in. But for a pay per view that we were kind of like saying, eh, also it's probably not going to be that good. Yeah. Also, Asta's sort of come out of nowhere again, hasn't she? Back to the the top. Yeah, which is good. It is good. She's really good. Um, so yeah, for a preview that we were like thinking, not expecting loads from. Got, yeah, I think it did a great job at moving either finishing storylines or moving ones on. Mm. Um, the matches were all of a good standard. There was no terrible matches, yeah. um, and there was a couple of good to great ones. So yeah. for me, my pay per view, what do we say? Pay per view points. I don't know. <laughs> we're all about alliteration here on Welcome to Wrestling. I would go with a solid seven out of ten for yeah, TLC. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a seven as well. It was good. Good. So that's our pay per view post mortem for WWE yeah. TLC in twenty eighteen. The next the next pay per view. The Royal Rumble. My probably my favourite pay per view of the year. Yeah. Oh, my favourite ma- my favourite match of the year. I think for me, in terms of a pay per view to watch Rumble. Yeah. But as a spectacle and like Mania. us all getting together, yeah, Mania. Mania's great as well. Yeah, but uh, the, my favourite match is the Rumble match because it's it's so it's exciting. A, yeah, it is good. So yeah, that's the next uh, pay per view. Can't wait for until it until the the first one that we watched together and Randy Orton won it and we were both. Oh yeah. Well, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, oh, yeah, we did watch it last year, didn't we? Yeah, because. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura won it. It was the last pay per view that we watched in my old flat, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Shinsuke won it, and he's gone on to great things since. Oh, winning God, it. yeah. Anyway, subscribe, and we will see you in our uh, Raw replay and SmackDown synopsis. Here's where they need to start making things really interesting again on the weekly television. And I think yeah. and hope that they will, because there was a big sort of thing happen on Raw, but we'll get to that. See you later.